Hey guys, round 32 had a superhero. As you see, Nigel Hayes Davis, he managed to score 50 points in a single game, breaking the record from uh, Shane Larkin. The previous record, Shane Larkin had 49 points in a single game, and Nigel Hayes Davis managed to score 50, and only by scoring five free throws. It was uh, a spectacular night for uh, Hayes Davis, amazing game, uh, big, con big congratulations. Um, a big second round also from uh, Nigel Hayes Davis. Uh, it seems that he's carrying the team um, to the top standings. Um, it was just, you know, uh, just an amazing game. Just an amazing game from uh, from Hayes Davis. Uh, Bill, anything to comment? It was impressive. It was impressive the, the fact that he didn't need many shots to, to achieve 50 points. So very effective scoring from from Hayes Davis um yeah in a game that um uh, it goes to the books uh, to the history books for uh, for Fener uh, and as you can see here he is the the superhero of the round 32 mm -hmm. and um let's see if this record will ever break you know before um before even the 49 from Larkin uh, we were thinking that you know it's almost impossible someone to ever score 50 uh, plus in Euroleague, but there it is, uh, 2024, we have 50 points, so who knows where this is going, um, but uh, yeah, it was a spectacular performance, and congrats to to uh, his Davis, amazing. Um, also, uh, not only with this performance, but I think he, he is a candidate for either the first or the second Euroleague team, at least in my eyes, he, he is having a big second round, um, scoring wise and also contributing uh, to the team. And as you see, Fenerbahce is number five in the standing. So that says a lot yeah. as well. I think, I, th I think for the uh, forward position, it will be quite tough selection as you had quite many forwards that had um, half year of amazing performances. So. Uh, Moneke was ecstatic, let's say, for most of the um, the regular season, but lately is not uh, as great. But um, Peters, it was the same. He started amazingly. Mitoglu, uh, amazingly. So we see a lot of ups and downs. There are a lot of candidates for the uh, first uh, Euroleague all teams. And honestly, I think whoever you choose from all these uh, forwards, um, it wouldn't be a wrong guess, right? Uh, because every one of them deserves it. And as you said, uh, his Davis, I think he's doing, he's having an amazing second half of the year for sure. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we just mentioned Fener um, winning again uh, in a very strange round where uh, Olympiakos won in Partizan. Uh, in a very tough game, when they came back uh, from a big deficit, uh, the third quarter, with an ecstatic William Goes. Um, I, I, I believe. Uh, I believe. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, and I told you. I think this yeah. uh, Stark Arena is Williams Goes Arena to play. Last year with Real Madrid, he scored a crucial three-pointer in the playoffs, and now in this game. He just carried the team to the to the, to the victory, a big big victory for uh, for Olympiacos. Just I want to add this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shots, heroic uh, shots and positions uh, from him. Um, but Partizan, you know, uh, we thought that um, they were they were getting the upper hand of the game, um, but then there was a switch, and then Olympiacos just. Um, uh, never came back from that, never looked back from that. Uh, however, even though they won, uh, they dropped in, in the standings because everyone above them has won uh, their uh, games. Um, so now everything at the top remains the same. Uh, another big win from um, the other Greek team on a way when Panathinaikos won in Bologna. Uh, however, Bologna, they have already uh, secured uh, the their position in the play-in 
So they are playing mainly for the place, uh, the placement in, in within the seventh to the tenth position. They can't get to the current six spots either, but they won't. Uh, they cannot lose the. They cannot end below the tenth position. So from that fact, they are secure. For them, uh, I'm, I, I don't remember whether they can actually uh, end up seven. We need to see what they've done with Maccabi. But if Maccabi wins even one game, Virtus cannot be uh, on the seventh position. Um, that means the, potentially they, they may have a, a tough uh, play in tournament. Um, then we have the, the crazy um, play in fever. Bayer did manage to win in. Uh, against Barca. Barca made uh, a crucial away win um, in their race to, to keep the um, home court advantage at the four, first four position give for the playoff. So Barca remains at the, uh, the number four spot. With this lost Bayer, they have minimal now chances to get to the play-in. There is one scenario when they can still end up in, in that scenario, they need uh, FS winning no games and then they need Partizan to finish at fif uh, 15 wins. And then in a multiple um, tie, tie. Uh, Bayer, Bayer actually has the upper hand because has one more win, ha has won both games versus Partizan. <laughs> so anyone from these teams below um, with Partizan and Bayer, including Bayer, goes in. So that's a very rare, very tough scenario to happen, but that's yeah. the only way for Bayer. So if uh, FNs, um wins the next game, Bayer is mathematically off. Um, and then the plane. Uh, the, yeah, the other uh, big win was Algiris, win against Milano, uh, making things from Milan almost impossible uh milan don't have a great placement in a multi-tie scenario uh, when you have a multi-tie um excluding Bayer, partisan has the upper hand um and of course basconia with uh with a loss against the fs remain at 16 wins so they also been now in a stressful situation uh, because uh, in case they end up on the 10th position, uh, in that case, uh, in case that FS keeps winning, um, then uh, again, they don't have the upper hand in a multi-tie. Partizan has the upper hand due to um, um, the internal game between the, the teams that will tie. The points, um, yeah. Exactly. So it's a very tough um, situation for most of the teams. Uh, clearly, FS is the big winner of uh, of that whole uh, thick, uh, of that whole round because it's up to their hand to do two wins and um, get to the play in tournament. However, in However, order to do that, yeah, they have a they big need game. to go and win. They need to go and win uh, in the in the toughest uh, in, the, in the toughest arena based again on the home court um exactly. result that each team has this season and Fenerbahce as you see they have they lost only one game the whole season so far so um the mission for Anadolu FS is very very tough to win uh not impossible but it, in my opinion it, will, it, it is the game to to watch in this watch. Uh, in this round yes it will be it will be amazing um also you see some other games uh for example we have barcelona versus maccabi another uh uh top top game to watch um then of course we have in spain real madrid versus basconia but you know lately real madrid it seems that they are they are on the autopilot mode they just you know <clears throat> they is the last game in Asabe they lost they lost from uh, Manresa, if I'm not mistaken. But you know, that's maybe that's how uh, the coach is preparing the team for the playoffs. Let's say to roll. So now it's so, uh, mm -hmm. 
last last time i think last two episodes we predicted both of the big surprises uh we talked about sasa bradovic do not select him versus armani he lost at home and we talked about sus mateo versus um servena zvezda do not select him at home but he won but it was such a tough game that you know you would have risked so high um uh, credits uh, exactly that it wouldn't maybe you know the 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 risk was too high for for the money you're paying and a- exactly perhaps because... a similar situation but Mm-hmm. Nedovic and Hange had an amazing game for uh, Serena Zvezda in uh, in uh, in Madrid versus Real. And on the other hand, Musa had a 30-point game. We had a 50-point game and a 30-point game in this round. Amazing. Um, but let's see for the uh, coaches. Uh, so, oh, no, forgot, we have also we the Italian. We forgot yes. the last game. Sorry. Yeah. We have, and it's a big, big game. It's the Italian derby. Um, uh olympia milan versus uh, virtus bologna is you know the game it's crucial game uh mainly for emporio uh olympia milano but uh, also for virtus um as bill said uh milan is coming from a tough loss versus uh, zalgiris and at home they need to win they need to win uh otherwise their chances to get to the plane will be minimal or I don't know if there will be out it, it's the time of the season that you need the calculator more and just the, look at the fixtures uh, and the standings um but as you see we have a, a big game last game but big game uh in Italy yeah uh yeah we move to the coach is that for the problem yeah so for the coach selection, the first coach we recommend is um, Sasa Brodovic from uh, Monaco. Monaco is playing at home versus uh, Zalgiris. Um, we believe Monaco wants to push for the second spot, so they uh, for the uh, home court advantage. So they will give everything to win this game to improve their position in the standings. Um, and if they lose, actually, uh, there is a chance for them to to drop even, you know, at the six seven position, mm-hmm. uh, at the at the six position, right? So um, it is crucial for Zalgiris as well. Uh, but then, you know, is 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 the moment when you need the home court to count. Yeah, that's true, and also um, I have to mention that lately. Uh, Mike James is not performing as he is used to perform. So let's see if now in this game he will get back to his to his mode, uh, scoring mode, and also uh, because he's one of the top guards in your league. So lately he's not playing at top level, but you know every every player needs you know to have a small drop in the performance, and then they will be back. For the uh, second uh, code selection, we will we'll go to um, the opening game of this round, and that will be uh, Barzokas from Olympiacos uh, versus Servena Zvezda. Uh, Olympiacos, they, as we mentioned earlier, they had this big away win in Serbia last week, uh, and they need to do it again. They need to go again in Serbia and win. They desperately need the win in their um, race for a home court advantage but even if you look at the standings Maccabi is just on their tail so um, you know a worst case scenario they could even drop at their seventh position right so they they really need that win and they should be able to to get at them and have another win in uh, Belgrade this time (laughs) in the same stadium as well uh, because I see Stark Arena um and last the third coach uh we recommend is uh Jelko Bradovic from uh partisan partisan is playing away versus alba berlin um must win game for uh partisan um so lede is also back zach lede is back he played in the uh, ava league uh game so with zach lede back uh partisan will push to get the w 
to improve their position um, in the standings and also try to get to the play-in uh, spot. So this is uh, this is our Aliub Dunks team, our main team, let's say. Yeah, um, and this was the result last time around. Yeah. Um, so we we did have a great result from Colts as we expected, the 25 points from the same game. Um, Hunter also 20. Um, even though we expect him to play even better, to be honest. Uh, Fantasy-wise, I think he was is good, 20. Baldwin, uh, very good. It's nice as well. However, we had four Wilbekin and Moneke performing um, not as great as we wanted. So we dropped at uh, 165 only. Um, so going into the next round, we decided to do a uh, couple of changes. We're starting from the coach and we wanted to bring Zelim Robatovic. So again, with the same opponent, but again, a team that desperately needs the win versus Alba that is out of the uh, race. Um, just five credits, so we think it's a, a very good um, risk uh, uh, for the credits you have. Then uh, we kept Pradig and Fall. Although Fall didn't have the best of the games, we think that the game in Serbia is suitable uh, for him and he should be able to have a big game. Um, then we wanted to bring Lede um, for Abbas Moneke. Uh, Lede bounced back after his um, games that he was out of the team due to uh, his father passing. He um, played at the, uh, at the Adriatic League um, this weekend and he was uh, very good at scoring around 20 points. Yes. Um, and we think he's going to be there ready uh, to make the big push for Partizan uh, for the playoffs. Uh, the other forward we select is Peters. Um, we believe, although Peters hasn't been on his best form lately, and he's coming back from a zero game versus Partizan, you can see before he has high scoring games. And if we go back, there are periods when he's really on fire. Last um, last time around, Luis Servenos has had his uh, highest uh, score with 34.1, scoring 28 points. So we uh, hope for a similar showing from uh, from Peters, and it's only 12.6. Both of these uh, forwards are 12.6, so uh, is um, a discount from you know the highest like uh, Hayes Davis, Moneke, etc. Um, then finally, uh, we are bringing in Nan for. Uh, Wilberkin. We really thought about this position and with the same credits to bring Okobo, but um, at the same time, uh, at the dilemma we had between Okobo and Nan, we were thinking about the turns. And as you can see, everyone that is in our main team plays turn one. So we need someone strong from uh, for turn two. So we, st we decided that Nan is a better option for us um, so that with Mirotis, we have another, you know, important, um, not just important, but um, captain-wise uh, player for the second round. We kept, as you can see, uh, our top uh, forward. And then, of course, we kept uh, our um, two lower credit players, uh, Bicerovic and Marikovic, that they keep returning for us some points. And that's the basics. So you can see Bicerovic very, nicely uh, always scoring some uh, points always positive and at the same time Marinkovic he's been a little bit off his use of double digit returns um also he's he scored uh I think single it was the first game. time after yeah after more than 10 rounds that scored a single point game so we believe in um really um important game for Basconia that he needs to step up and do more especially with scoring so with that we kept him in the team. Um, any comments from you? Sorry. No, I think this team is uh, again uh, very full and um, also as Bill said 
we had to take into consideration turn one and turn two and have uh, two players uh, to get to the uh, main team if some of uh, the other players do not perform in the, at a high level. But let's see the uh, development team. Here we had 170 points, that's even better. Uh, we had Katash as a coach and gave us 20 points. Uh, great. Um, but as you see, uh, Lesor and Mitoglu didn't perform uh, as we uh, wanted. Uh, Larkin, on the other hand, he delivered uh, as a captain. Evans also and Motley with 33 fantasy points. Uh, these three players gave us a big push. Um, as you see, then with, uh, I think, four credit players, uh, Robertson gave 13 um and uh clever give five but 2.5 as you see again for uh credit strassel didn't play and light and uh, schneider uh, both are the fillers of the team but light had a minus and uh, schneider just one fantasy point but um taking this into consideration let's see uh what changes we made uh so here as well you see coach is uh Jelko Bradovic with uh, five credits because that gives us the flexibility to spend more credits for the players. Um, we kept uh, Lesort, we kept Robertson, um, Schneider, Claver, mainly these three are the fillers for the team. Um, but we didn't uh, keep Lighty uh, because we thought if he gets another minus, so it's a bit risky. So uh, instead of Lighty, we brought in Ojaleye. Ojaleye had a big game. Uh, in the last round, um, he is one of the top players for uh, Valencia. Uh, as you see, he has 50.4, 13, 13 uh, fantasy points, but he is scoring and getting the rebounds. Um, so versus Asfel, he has a possibility of having a good game. Again, the factor turn one, turn two comes here. Ojeleg is playing turn one, so. Uh, that's why we chose Ojaleye to be also the captain for uh, for the turn one. Uh, also, we didn't keep Evans mainly because he's playing in um, a tough game versus Monaco. Of course, he can he can deliver because he's in a great he's having a great season. But we thought of uh, bringing Tonut. Tonut has a, a specific role for Armani. He gets on the court. He's scoring some uh, three point shots, playing. Uh, some uh difference and uh, you know as you see 10 fantasy points versus algiris 6.6 versus fenerbahce 15.4 versus monaco but he get, he's getting the minutes so um he's like the glue guy for for our money and with 5.1 credits we believe he can give uh something back and then instead of strassel we brought in napier uh again turn two napier uh, had a good game versus uh, Zalgiris, I think 18, yes, 18 fantasy points, but scoring 17 points to rebounds, to assist. So he has to give again another push to the team with uh, Shields and uh, Mirotic. And uh, these are the changes we kept, as you see, Mitoglu, we kept Larkin and Motley as well. So again, you see the bench is uh prettier let's say than the starting five but that's because of turn one and turn two um so for turn two we have several options for a captain lesor or larkin depending uh who we choose um again another full team uh bill do you have anything to add i think for us the big um we had big dilemma between um two positions so we have the napier and Ozeleye versus um, Napier and Hezonia or um, I think it was uh, Yabuzele yep. and, mm -hmm. and Okobo and who was the guard and Okobo. Okobo and even though we thought that potentially the Real forwards were a better uh, fit for us um, actually we went with uh, this formation because of the turns so if we didn't have Ozele we wouldn't have a turn one um, captain. captain. So that's how we, we get into Ozeleye and Napier. We really believe that Napier 
up to the something better. Um, so it is a, a risk, but we think there is a quite, uh, you know, um, good chance that he delivers. Yeah, we can get something back in return. Let's say something good. Yeah. Cool, and uh, I think with that, uh, we hope to see another historic round. Um, let's see if someone scores 51, I doubt so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the fight for the playing especially and the home court advantage is hot. So everyone enjoy the games and speak to you next time. Yeah, guys, enjoy the games and uh, see you soon.